let's look back on that France game. What was that game like from your perspective and the rest of the guys on the pitch? Yeah, first of all, I think uh, for, for the whole team, it was uh, an incredible experience. Obviously, the stadium we're playing in, the French atmosphere, uh, the team we're playing against. Um, yeah, all the guys were fired up for the game. And I think we took a lot of positives out of the game. But overall, it was a really, really cool experience for us. After the first half, both teams scoreless. What do you think kind of got away from you guys in that second half when France got all three? Yeah, I think anybody watching saw in the first half, we definitely frustrated them a lot and they couldn't really break us down. And I think, you know, as the game grew on, they, they score a goal from outside the box, a great shot, and it kind of forces up us to open up a little bit and you kind of get more transition moments. And sometimes that's just the way it goes. You know, we missed those two opportunities. Um, I think Georgie with the crossbar, me with the post, um, and yeah, Elise with another great goal from outside the box. So um, you see the scoreline, we feel it doesn't reflect how we played and yeah, all to play for in the next two games. Uh, John, I thought you guys were brilliant for the first 60 minutes. Uh, my biggest concern was about creating chances and being clinical. Being on the pitch, how do you feel that you guys moving forward to the next game can create more chances and opportunity? Because defensively and tactically, you guys were great. But it's that scoring the goals now. That's the next step. Yeah, to be honest, I, I think we created, created enough. Um, but like you said, being more clinical, obviously, with my chance, Georgie's chance, I think Paxton had a few chances. Um, that's That was one of the main uh, talking points, and we'll be looking at that and you know just trying to remain calm in front of goal. Um, obviously, those are the tight margins that can win and lose a game for you, and you saw that in the first game. And if we can sharpen that up, I think we'll be perfectly fine. Um, obviously, as a fan of the U.S. team, seeing your the response to the, uh, the squad after that first goal goes in was, I think, incredible. In particular, it leads to your uh, shot at, or your header against the post. Is that yeah. something you guys worked on in particular? Is that something that you guys are prepared for? Because it seemed like you guys snapped in in a very different way where sometimes it feels like, especially with the momentum you had, it could bring you down a little bit and get you uh, take you a little bit longer to get into the game. You guys didn't have that. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think you see, you know, in a lot of games, sometimes it can get away from you. And I think that is really a testament to the culture here. And, you know, we wanted to still stick to our game plan. And you can let the game run away with the atmosphere, with the crowd behind them now. Um, but you saw the response from us. You know, the chances were there. And we had them. And, yeah, maybe it's 1-1. And then it's all to play for in the in the last 20-ish minutes. But, um, yeah, the group's really tight. And I think that helped us on the field. And I think we displayed that. You could really see that unity on the field, and unity breeds character. But I want to ask you about this. Your head coach, Marco Mitrovic, what's been the message post the disappointment of the France loss and in preparation for this next match against New Zealand? Yeah, right after the game, you know, we, we huddled up uh, by our bench, and we really said, look, um, we thought we played really well, and obviously those little moments got away from us, but... Uh, we, we have to move forward and it's a must win game for us next and you don't have time to sulk about it. Um, you kind of just have to turn the page and the games come so quick. You know, we play tomorrow already. So it's another opportunity to uh, to showcase ourselves and, and get the three points and we move to the final game, really. Uh, John, you talked about the atmosphere um, of the first game and everything about that. Just for any of the young budding football stars watching right now, could you describe the atmosphere in three words? of the experience for you? Uh, three words would be impossible, but I think that is the game that you dream of as a little kid, um, you know, walking onto the field and seeing the red, white, and blue for the French, um, waving their flags. And yeah, I think that's what you dream of and standing in the line hearing the national anthem. Um, yeah, it just gave us all chills really. And seeing the anthem with your brothers next to you, um, there's nothing better than that. And yeah, just an insane experience, but I don't think I could put it into three words. Okay, I'll take the three for you. I take chills, I take insane, and then I'll let you have one last word for it. Uh, just a massive honor, so honor. Okay, mm. there you go. All right, Nigel got the homework assignment that he was hoping you <laughs> yeah. would turn in for. Hey, John, you talked about how close-knit this group is. I know it's a quick turnaround from match to match, but what are some of the ways that you guys have been bonding off the field in France? Yeah, so... Uh, in our pre-camp, we were in Bordeaux, right on a golf course, which was very convenient for us because a lot of guys golf here. So um, on our off days, we would have big golf outings. Um, you know, I think we had like four groups of four and we would play scramble. I don't know if you guys know what that is. 
um, and you put something on the line and yeah, that, that definitely builds up um, the togetherness and a lot of activities off the field or in the hotel as well, like uh, pool. We had, a, we have a little putt putt mat. Um, obviously it's a, a big golfing group here. Um, but yeah, you know, we really do everything together and we're trying to soak in everything we can. And one of the things um, that happened the other day is Walker kind of talked to us. Obviously he has that experience from the world cup and, um he kind of suggested that we start journaling about this trip and helping us stay grounded and really living in the moment and i think everybody's making the most of that that's a good idea yeah, yeah. that's great yeah. did he did he get the whole team journals matching journals or you guys do it on your phone notes how does that work <laughs> he, he didn't but um there are plenty of pens and paper here <laughs> um, so yeah i've been journaling and i think the biggest thing for him was uh just remembering the trip and the journey that we're on because from the World Cup, he says he doesn't remember much from it. Um, ah. So he does it now to really remember uh, these these moments. Wow, John, I love all those things you said, but I know you, you forgot to mention something being in Bordeaux. I know you left the wine out of it. <laughs> and the different yeah, wine. Yeah, yeah, sit back and laugh. I know you left that out of it. Um, no, looking forward to the New Zealand game. Um, what's the mentality in the camp right now? Are you guys looking at this game as a must win? Yeah, for sure. Um, we have to win this game and it's going to be all gas no breaks for us we're going to do everything we can to get the three points and that's really the only thing on our minds um and just killing these opponents that are next um that's what we have to do to get to the knockout stage and we'll do everything we can to do it okay so nigel's talking about wine john but one of the things that france is known for is escargot snails have you been brave enough to try that is that kind of in your wheelhouse we have some picky eaters here, so nobody <laughs> has had snails. Um, I personally like them, but I haven't come across them yet at a restaurant, to be honest. Have you had frog's legs? No, I would I would be willing to try that. Oh, but, frog's um, legs is absolutely sensational. Yeah, they're both yeah. here. They're really snails. good. Frog's legs, <laughs> yeah. down for all that. What um what what do you think is different about? I know you've been with the national team previously. Obviously, Olympics a little bit of a different energy, a little bit of a different vibe. What are some of the differences in this camp to previous camps? Yeah, I think the Olympics ex it itself gives it a different feeling. You know, all these athletes around the world coming here. Obviously, we're not in Paris, but, you know, you still get that feeling of, wow, this is a, a global, a really big global tournament. And um, we feel like we have all of America behind us and all the athletes and, you know, all of our families are here and just the support system and from the staff, the coaches, everybody. Um, it just gives it that different feel. And, yeah, it's truly incredible. Now. Olympic men's soccer, I feel like you're only as good as the talent pool you have that are 23 and under, but also the addition of the older players really have an impact on this side. Being in that back line with two veterans like Walker and Miles, what sort of impact did they had on you as a young defender? Yeah, it's been amazing. Um, obviously, I've been with them in camps before, but they're really holding down the fort back there, you know, just with their presence, their physical abilities and their communication abilities, all that sort of stuff. Um, obviously, I've they have things off the field that you can learn from as well. But um, I think just the presence and a sense of stability in the back for sure has been massive for us. And Georgie as well, he's a super creative player. And I think you saw his quality in the last game, um, what he has to bring. So those three guys have been amazing for us and we're super happy for them to be here. John, talk to me about you yourself personally. Like, do you feel for you yourself, you're ready to make that next step, that you're ready for that full international, getting into senior side? Uh, and uh, what do you feel you can bring to the senior side? Yeah, I'll always back myself for sure. I think so. Um, whether or not the higher ups think that um, that's up to them. But look, all I can do is try and perform the best I can. And I think overall, as the team had a really good game against France, and those are some of the top players in the world. So, um, you know, if, as long as we can keep displaying that and I can keep displaying that, um, I think it sets me up pretty well. John, one of the most fun parts of the Olympics is getting to watch all these sports. And I don't know about you, some that I didn't even know existed. I was watching handball yesterday, like, whoa, I didn't know that this is how that game was played. Obviously, you're playing soccer at an Olympic level, but what is another sport, maybe a more obscure one, that you think that John Tolkien could make a run at and be pretty successful? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know for me personally, but something I'm interested in watching is the surfing. I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with that. Um, they're in all Tahiti. the way. Yeah, they're all the way from here, but um, apparently the waves are crazy there and they're staying on a boat as their Olympic village. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and I'm a beach guy, so 
yeah, I, I guess I would I would like to try that myself, but I'm also very interested to see how that goes. Yeah, no, no waves in France, mate. Don't worry about that, Giza. <laughs> don't you're, you're, don't you're jump safe. in the Seine. Don't yeah. jump in the yeah. river Seine. Well, the no waves in France. The hair is kind of giving that. The hair is. The hair is giving that beach vibe. The mullet, it's going strong. Yeah. Back, I had to bring it back for everybody back home and. Uh, I cool. decided to do it the other day. Wait, 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 when you mean everybody back home, please be more specific. Well, I've had a lot of requests uh, in my hometown and from Red Bull fans, so uh, I had to do it for them. Oh, so New Jersey, New York, which one? That's it, uh, both. Ah, oh, so where Alexis is from. Bring back the mullet, Alexis. Both. <laughs> I, I'm, again, Newark. Uh, well, who gave you the fade? Is there a barber or is one of the players? There is a bar. We have two barbers here. Um, they're great, and uh, we kind of just show up when we want, and they cut our hair how we, we would like it, and they're amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty nice over here. We've, we've got some good accommodations, I have to, I have to say. Now, John, yeah. we're going to go from surfing and haircuts and badass mullets to a bit more serious of a conversation and topic, I think one that you're probably aware of. Now, it was found a few months ago that you interacted with and liked a couple controversial social media posts. And we want to hear your side of the story. And it's never easy to talk about, but I think one of the things I respect about you is you're a grown man and you're always willing to talk about the difficult things. Take us through what went into that for you and what was it like to see some of the interactions, reactions from some of the people you may have offended through the process? Yeah, like you said, I, I first off want to just apologize to anybody who I, I did offend. I understand the platform I have and liking those posts on Twitter um, is probably not the best thing to do. And um, yeah, again, I'd like to apologize to anybody I offended and I understand my actions and I'm open to conversations with anybody who'd like to talk to me about it. Um, I'm always open to that. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think it reflects who I am. And I, I'll kind of just leave it at that, you know. Um, I know it was insensitive for me, and it's definitely a learning moment for me, but um, who are we without learning? And we all make mistakes, and these things can happen. And, yeah, I just want to move forward. And, again, I'm willing to talk to anybody who'd like to reach out, um, but I understand um, that it was insensitive, and I'm sorry to anybody who I offended. John, thanks so much for your candidness and, and willingness to, to chat with us on that here on the show today. And best of luck for you and the rest of the team moving forward for your matchup tomorrow against New Zealand.